Hello, my friend. This is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com, and today I'm going to talk to you about a spiritual key to getting more wealth. This is something that people often forget. Now, a lot of the professing Christian church says, you know, oh, you're supposed to be poor, you're supposed to be broke, because you're here to suffer and learn lessons. And even though they never learn the lessons, there's people who have been going to church for 40 years, and they're still battling the same sins they were on day one. There's no lessons being learned there. And it's foolish to blame God and act like God doesn't see that these supposed trials and tribulations you're going through that you're supposed to learn lessons from aren't working. They haven't worked in decades. Why would they work this time? God doesn't want you broke. God doesn't want you poor. God doesn't want you suffering. He didn't create you for that. These are all things that came in from the fall and they come into your life from the same reason the fall came in, which was sin. You're not getting suffering and misery and failure and all this stuff because you're doing right. Now, I'm not saying that's all to blame on you. We live in a fallen world. So there are things that go on that maybe aren't necessarily a direct result of your choices. But here's the key. Let me read this verse. And the, the key is in the verse, but many people ignore it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says this, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Now people focus on the power to get wealth, which is great. It is, a, it is what God gives us. He gives us the power to get wealth. That creativity, there's creativity to get wealth. But often people forget that first part, which is thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. So when I talk about prosperity, I talk about abundance, I talk about wealth, I talk about being rich, I talk about being successful. People often come in with their nonsense talking about, well, that's the love of money, or you can't serve mammon. When no one's telling them to serve mammon, they fail to see the fact that when you are honoring God with your life, and you're always looking to God, and you're seeing him as your business partner, you're going to behave differently. You're going to get different results, too. God's not on a losing team. God's not in a failed business. God's not making your business fail. He's not making your work be harder or more miserable and get less sales and less customers and less whatever. God's the blesser. God's the giver. So much so that he capped it off with the ultimate gift of becoming a man through his son, becoming a man, walking among men, and he sent his son that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly, that you might be saved. Not so you could be miserable, not so you could be like everyone else, not so you could be average, not so you could be normal, not so you could be mediocre. And he gave you the power to get wealth. Now, this does not mean he gave you money. Now, he will give money. I've had times where money comes out of nowhere. And it's literally miraculous. I've told this story before, but one time I was having some financial issues and someone was knocking on my door selling something. And I had a conversation with them that led to a business deal that led to $10,000. And it was from nowhere. The guy was just coming around. But see, that was the power to get wealth. That creative power to get wealth. That creativity came in. And I saw the opportunity talking with the individual and it led to money. It led to wealth. But I didn't forget God. I prayed. And this is one of the things in business and life. You need to make sure God is at the forefront. Now, a lot of people do this in spiritualized, religious-sounding ways, but normally there's excuses. Well, you know, huh? God's just trying to teach me a lesson. I'm going through the valley right now. And they got all these things that sound good to other people who are also going through all that stuff and aren't learning anything, aren't growing any, aren't ever getting past that mediocrity of the world. And then they have the nerve to blaspheme God and blame it on him. But my friend, you should remember the Lord thy God. He's not the one giving you bad times. He's not the one giving you problems. He's not the one giving you poverty. He's not the one giving you an empty bank account. He gives you the power to get wealth. But you must foremost remember the Lord thy God. Are you doing that in your business? This is something I do each and every day. Throughout the day, I pray about things. What, what should I do here, God? What should I do with this? How should I interact with this person? And you know what happens? I get ideas that I could not have come up with myself. I get interactions with people I would not have been able to come up with. 
people just come into my life that I never would have known of by the blessing of the Lord because I'm remembering the Lord my God. He's always on my mind and he's a part of my business. Matter of fact, he's the head part of the business. I'm a vessel in the business. In all my businesses I have, God is the CEO. Obviously, for earthly purposes, I'm the CEO, but the real CEO is God. And I put him at the pinnacle of the company because he is the authority. And you know what? That gets the best results. You don't have to go through life wondering what you're supposed to do. God will give you wisdom. Does the scripture say that God will not give you wisdom if you ask? He won't give it to you liberally? Or does it say what it actually says, which is he gives it liberally to those who ask and don't waver? So stop letting men talk you into being wavering and doubting and unbelief and, oh, I don't know, maybe God doesn't want me to know this. Maybe God doesn't want me to have a revelation. Maybe God wants me to suffer. No, my friend. He's the one giving you the power to get wealth. He's not taking away your wealth from you. He's not trying to make you not know what to do, not have the creative ability to get wealth. He's the one that gives you the power to get wealth. He's the one that teaches you to profit. My friend, I want to really encourage you in this. Many people's lives are not at the level they could be at and should be at because they're not acknowledging God in all their ways. They're not seeing him in all their doings. They're not even seeking his wisdom. They'll go through that entire day and they haven't even asked God about any aspect of their business. And they wonder why they're not getting the results they want. They haven't sought his wisdom at all. And then they're, when they do seek wisdom, they immediately go into somebody else who knows nothing. When they could go to the Most High and get his wisdom. I'm not telling you, you don't ever ask other counsel and a multitude of counselors of wisdom. That's good. It's not bad. But your first step down the road of asking for wisdom should be to God. Because he will give it to you. It could come in the form of another person. You could pray for wisdom and then somebody comes into your life and tells you the exact thing you needed to know that gets you the results you need. That happens. But most often it's just like a download from heaven into your mind and you go, oh, okay, now I see what I need to do. And that may sound simplistic, but it actually works and it'll work each and every day. You don't have to be in this alone. You're not alone. But many people act like they are and they forget God. And they just go about their life doing what they think they're supposed to do. Never depending on him. Never seeking him. And then wondering why they don't get the results that they want. Because how could they? They've forgotten God. And that removes them from the power to get wealth. That removes them from the classroom of being taught to profit. Instead, you're just going around flailing around in the darkness by yourself not even seeking the wisdom of God that he gives liberally. So my friend, I want to encourage you today. If your finances, your wealth, your relationships, whatever part of your business, your health, your life, doesn't matter what it is. If it's not where you want it to be and you could go another level higher, seek the wisdom of God. And make sure as you're going throughout your business day, as you're going throughout your life in general, your health, your exercise, whatever you're doing, your diet, Make sure you're seeking the wisdom of the Lord and you're asking for his wisdom. Should I eat this thing? Should I do this exercise? Should I call this client? Should I buy this product to resell? Whatever it may be, seek the Lord's wisdom and watch as you start to see that power to get wealth unfold in your life and wealth and riches and abundance start overflowing into it each and every day. My friend, I praise the blessing for you. May God bless you richly.